what made you want to come out of retirement? Um, just to fight a, a guy who's a dick, a guy who's just an asshole, who I can't stand. Yeah, that's why. I've known Stephen Bonner, gosh, I think since after he did The Ultimate Fighter, and I didn't really know him, I knew of him, I met him, just in conversation of, hey, what's up, and no more than that. Uh, I, I didn't talk to him at all until right before I signed uh, the Bellator deal, and he started talking smack and saying that I needed money, and it looks like I'm signing a deal just to come back and make money, that my ex took all my money, and started saying some personal stuff about me. and. Uh, come to realize this guy needs to be shut up. I, I just don't like to say the word retirement. Uh, you know, it's not something I like to use, not to say as I haven't slipped at times. But I just don't like it because the way I grew up was that the only reason why I'm standing here today was because I didn't have the word quit in me. I didn't have the word of like I'm done in me. And the reason why I was successful in a lot of fights was because I didn't have that in me either. I would never give up. And for me to say those words, and it's not that way with everybody, it's just because of the way I was brought up, um, that I'll, I just won't ever say that I'm done. And not until I'm dead, because there's always an opportunity somewhere. And if the opportunity is, is the right one, then, then, you know, who knows? But again, like I said, I'm never going to take away those options for myself. There's rumors of a backstage altercation between yourself and Eddie Bravo um, after his recent match with Royal Gracie and Meta Morris. What happened between you and Eddie Bravo? What did he I say? I just approached him and I told him, hey, I like what you said about my father and my brother, my family out there after the, the match. And he's like, uh, okay. I was like, because I always heard you talking trash about my family. That's when he got up, raised his voice, put the finger on my face, and put his hand down, told him not to raise his voice. And John Jack stepped in, and I never talked. He's saying he never talked bad about my family, never talked about bad about Grace Jiu Jitsu. But it's what he represents. He represents it's okay to drink, to smoke drugs. I'm against that. I'm a martial artist. If you have kids, do, would you like to take your kids to learn from a guy that endorses such a thing? Nobody wants that. And the layman that doesn't know anything about who is who associates everybody. Oh, everybody that does jiu-jitsu smokes pot. I can't have that. Sorry. Here I am fighting for something, he's doing something else. I thought I won that fight Red Page. Everybody thinks I won. Uh, he wanted to rematch with me. If he wants to, he can get it. But to me, he's a bitch. He ain't gonna fight again. I think he's retired or something like that. He thought about fighting some organization he has, some weak ass organization. I don't know what he's doing. I don't care. You know what I'm saying? Like, he's a bitch. You know what I'm saying? I don't really fuck with him. I don't know what he does. I don't care. I'm worried about me, my team, the dive team, our American top team. You know, it's weird. <laughs> But for some reason, like, um, okay, I won Abu Dhabi 2003. I got injured, I took time off, whatever, I was married, I got divorced. And I had like a three year time where I was like in the dumps, like nothing was working out for me. And then all of a sudden, I came back and I won 2011 Abu Dhabi, which is weird for like an older guy. I was 37. And the same thing happened that we were striking. For some reason, I actually hit hard now. I actually, actually, I used to use punches just to take people down. Now, I can hit people hard. And I can take a punch, by the way. I guess that's a good thing, right? So, MMA-wise, if I get the right opportunity, I'm back. I'm back, baby. I'm back. What's it like working in Hollywood and with like such big name A-list celebrity movie stars? Uh, you know what? They're great guys. They're, they're fun to hang out with. They're fun to work with. Uh, everybody assumes because they're A-list actors and a bunch of alpha males that there'd be a bunch of drama and, and posturing and, and you know crap like that. And there was just absolutely none. I think we all felt honored to be part of such a special cast of guys and to be able to hang out and, and meet Harrison Ford and work with Harrison Ford, Arnold Schwarzenegger, so obviously Sly Stallone, on down the list. It's an amazing list of guys.
You know what, I'll tell you, when I was doing Strike Force, we kind of built it as we went, right? I mean, I only had four fighters under contract when I first started. I had Frank Shamrock, Kung Lee, Gilbert Melendez, and Josh Thompson. <coughs> and we kind of built it as we went, got the Showtime deal, did the partnership with Pro Lead, we got my financial backers, we, you know, we did, you know. This one, I felt like I signed, and I jumped on a train that's going 800 miles an hour, right? And, uh, you know, great staff, they're really hard workers, we're getting it done. But that's the biggest difference is that uh, when I jumped on, boom, we were all taken off. It wasn't, uh, you know, something that uh, we could ramp up to. It's such a great honor to be in there with someone, you know, you can't stand. It's like a gift, you know? What do you want for Christmas? God, I'd love to be locked in a cage with Tito Ortiz, Santa. I've been a good boy. Will you grant me my wish? Kaboom, there it is. Lock in the cage with Tito. It goes past uh, anything between me and Ken Shamrock, Chuck Liddell, anything like that. This is really serious. When someone talks about a person's family, talks about their fan, and my whole legacy of throughout my career, um, I take it very personal. Um, I'm going to say I'm going to shut him up. Just, he's a guy who's got paid I mean, it's a disgusting amount of money over his career and he constantly burns people and he's a miser and he, he gets count bottles and charges his friends and profits off them. And the guy's got like nine cars in his garage and you know he has training partners come to help him for his fight and the dude's riding a skateboard like seven miles to the gym and back instead of he can't get him a rental car. Just I mean it's a broken record just screwing over managers. People who come in, get him good contracts, make a lot of money and he screws them over so I mean I kind of see this as I'm, I'm, I'm karma for this fight you know like it's it's my job to to make him pay the price for the shit he did to other people I know it's kind of dumb I'm a person I'll admit that I'm deranged I need help so be it but this is it I'm karma I feel like I'm doing a good deed here I feel like I'm like you know I'm, I'm helping the whole universe here by, by having Good karma be carried out through my fists. There was the the incident with the masked man, Justin McCauley. What was your impressions of all that? Like, you know, um, when I seen the uh, Bonner bring out the gimp, it was just uh, a way they're trying to get under my skin. Um, you got to bring an old sparring partner out, saying that he's he used to be my coach. Yeah, he was never my coach. He was a sparring partner. I hired him as a sparring partner. I thought he was a brother as a good friend when you treat someone the way I treated him as expected to be like a brother but uh, it showed his true colors how he's a turncoat and uh, um, loyalty I guess they come a dime a dozen for him and you know um, I got people like negative like that out of my life for a reason and it just shows uh, what type of person he truly is and I'm glad I got the gun better in my life. The Justin Magnoli mass man deal like can you explain us what exactly happened there? I heard I read some stuff online I didn't know like it was rigged or if it was real or what the deal was. It's called, um, they made the decision to put me on live TV to make this fight announcement. And one, one of my favorite people of all time is Andy Kaufman. Why? Because he with everyone. And ultimately, he was just amusing himself. So I'm like, hey, good. They're going to announce this fight, put us on live TV. Wow, wow, this is my big chance. So let the world know what a sack of crap Tito Ortiz really is. And why not bring his old buddy out? But hey, I just don't want to bring him out. I want it to be a surprise. It was actually McCauley's idea. So, and hey, wait, I want people to, to tune into this fight and to talk about this. So I'm going to make a little spectacle here. And that's what I did. Got up and, you know, I knew it would cost me some fans and piss some people off. But ultimately, it got people talking. and It'll get people tuning in. And everything I said was the way I really felt about the guy. Really don't like him. And I wanted to let the world know. No more Mr. Knight. Nice guy, no more bullshit. I'm sick of all this fucking bullshit. Everyone says the right thing. Ooh, it's such a great honor to fight a true warrior. Uh, I'm very, like, come on, tell us how you really feel. This is how I really feel. You said that you and Dana White have finally buried the hatchet not too long ago. Um, how is your relationship with Dana these days? Uh, as far as I know, we're good. You know, I've, I've reached out to him several times and tried to get involved with them. 
Um, but you know, I know they're really busy. They got other things going on, um, and so I respect that. You know, they have their, 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 their direction that they're going, and I'm not a part of that direction, which is fine. I got no problem with that. Um, you know, they're busy. They're doing very good for themselves, uh, and they don't need me, which is fine. What kind of relationship do you have with Dana now? Um, I have no relationship with Dana at all. You know, um, the last time we we spoke, uh, it was I don't want to say hateful, but it was just. Uh, Better words, just quiet. That's it. What kind of relationship do you have with Dana now? It's cool. Yeah, I mean, we get along. I ran this idea over with him, and he wants to see me beat Tito's ass, so he released me to do it. Okay, so you like said, I want to go to Bellator and fight Tito. Yeah, I mean, I said, hey man, I got a crazy offer. Bellator is interested in me, in me fighting Tito. And, you know, but of course, you know, don't want to burn any bridges with you guys. You know, what do you think of it? And he goes, well, I'd love to see you beat the shit out of him. So there's still beef between those two, you feel? Well, Dana feels the same way about Tito as most people who know Tito feel about him. You know, if you really know the guy, then you know he's a selfish ass. Dana White, uh, from, we're on speaking terms. Like, I have his email, we talk every once in a while. Um, Dana White's a very fair person. Um, he can be very um, passionate in a positive or a negative way. Depends on uh, how, he, how he gets along with you or maybe his mood, right? So, yeah, me, me and Dana are fine. Um, I, I sent him an email. Thank you for letting me face Josh Burnett because, you know, it's out of his USC contract. He said, good luck, you know, and uh, have a good match, you know. Um, so Dana White's a very, it's actually a pretty fair person, um, but he's very passionate one way or the other. So, yeah, I, I'm in touch with him, but not like on a daily basis. And, and I, I think he's done a lot for the sport, and uh, you never know. I mean, man, it's all the same family, UFC. All the MMA promotions like this, this high level stuff like Bellator. As a founder of Strike Force, the only promotion in North America to truly ever compete with you is on a real basis. What do you think it's going to take to have the same success with Bellator? Well, I can tell you this we already have a great television deal. Spike TV is a great partner. They help build mixed martial arts. I mean, you know that. We all know that. Um, and it's going to be our job to put on the great fights and to build a cast of great, great fighters for the future. And then when the free agency market hits and heats up, then we'll, we'll get some of the free agents to come over. And, uh, you know, we'll hit them from the bottom up and we'll hit them from the top down. Bellator goes to get paid. I don't care about the UFC or what. I'm in Bellator, you know. That's what the people care about. The fans and the groupies care about this shit. Like, they want, they talk about UFC. I, I don't. They're doing their own thing. Great for them. I'm happy for them. I want everybody in the UFC to get paid. I want everybody in Bellator to get paid. I want people that are fighting to get taken care of and paid. I don't have nothing against the UFC or anybody else. But I'm in Bellator, so that's what I'm going to focus on. You know, I really don't think this is a competition rivalry of uh, Bellator between UFC. I think Bellator just can give the fans what they want to see, and that's great fights for free and amazing fights for free on Spike TV. Scott Kroger is going to build a foundation for the fans as he's already starting here with the uh, Fan Fest. Like giving back, you're bringing Hoist Green. Ken Shamrock, uh, Randy Couture, myself, uh, King Mo, I mean, uh, Michael Chanley, I mean, all, all, all these guys that uh, have really started. I mean, you look at the four fathers. <laughs> Ken Shamrock, Hoist Gracie, Randy Couture, and myself, the guys who built this uh, business and mixed martial arts what it is today. I think Scott Kroger's doing the smart idea of really making sure he doesn't forget about the true icons of the sport. And the younger guys like Chanlin, like Mo, and like these other guys who are up and comers, you know, they're going to ride in on it and they're going to be glorious also. Has Bellator reached out to you at all and asked you, like, do you want to be come back? Have they asked you anything? They've never actually asked me. I'd be open to it, but um, I guess if they asked me, it would be different. I think I could have probably reached out to them. Maybe there would be, you know, maybe something better, uh, maybe more dialogue. But I've been kind of like reclusive. I'm, I'm, I'm weird like that. I'm super outgoing, or I'm super like private, and I don't want to even talk to anyone. Or I'm just out there everywhere. So. Who knows what happened, but you never know. I mean, I'm, I'm friends with Tito. Oh, Tito's coach for like six years. King Mo's coach for like five years. Uh, Randy, Randy Couture, training partner for like four years. I know, I know everyone here. Of course, Grace was in my corner. I know everyone.
born here, man. So it's kind of like family. So I'm down with Belter. I love UFC. I like, man, we're all the same family, really, you know? And um, so if I get the right kind of uh, moment, the right kind of offer, the right kind of uh, road or the path to do something special, something meaningful, I will do it. I'm down to come back for sure. You originally took the job as brand ambassador for Bellator MMA. What are some of the duties you'll have in this position? What will you be doing for the company? Smile and wave. <laughs> Help you out the new guys, maybe how to deal with the pressure in the cage and outside the cage and um, with the promotion, maybe going down to Brazil. And so we're going to have great talent, great fights. We're going to put on fights that uh, that the media want to see, the fans want to see. We're going to put on fights that drive the needle and move uh, the ratings. We're going to put on fights that uh, put butts in the seats. And uh, we're going to have a good time. Well, I'll tell you right now, I'm very excited that I can actually say this, but I've always thought the next step for MMA and for it to be successful would be to have somebody to be able to compete with the UFC. And I'm not saying that in a bad way because I think that's good for MMA. I think it adds excitement for fans to be able to compare organizations against the other. And then it also adds the excitement of, of fighters being able to have an opportunity to negotiate prices for themselves and not have to be stuck on what someone gives you. And if you don't feel it's fair, you have no negotiating power. So you take it or you leave it. You know, Mayweather just came out saying that he wants to throw big money around and do MMA. What's your opinion on that? And is there room for him in that fight game, the MMA game? Boy, you know, I don't know what he knows about this business, but it's a very tricky business. Um, you know, but hey, listen, if he's into MMA and he wants to support it and he wants to back it, you know, I, I, I'm 100% behind it. Did you hear the Floyd Mayweather was talking about coming in the industry and offering big money? What's your opinion on that? Well, I mean, anybody can come in here and try and offer big money. We've seen it happen before where people come in and start throwing money around. Uh, affliction comes to mind yeah. where you see money being thrown around. The bottom line is this. You either have a good business plan or you don't have a good business plan. And you got to be smart in MMA because I've seen them swallow up many billionaires. Guys that come in and say, I got money and we can build this. And the next thing you know, they're bankrupt. This business is a different monster, and you have to have the right personality and the right business plan to make it work. So if he steps into it, he can't step into it and think he can just throw money at it because it'll just eat his money up. Do you think there's room for like a Mayweather promotion in MMA with like Bellator and UFC and the other ones that are around? Do you think there's enough fighters, like for like big name fighters to put on like a pay-per-view, let's say, and do you think there's room for him in the sport? Um, of course there's room. There's lots of room for competition here. It's just you got to build the fighters. The fighters want to go out and do the promotion to build themselves. You know, getting in the a cage and competing and fighting is one side of it, but doing the promotion side is, is a totally different animal. And a lot of fighters got to learn how to do that the right way and not be irritated by by the fans, by the um, promotion or by the news or um, you know anything like that where they got willing to go outside the box of just the fight world and I've understood that since day one I mean, that's why my name is one of the biggest names in mixed martial arts because I understood you know how to promote it's the promotion side of it and if uh, Mayweather comes in and does do that I mean he has really deep pockets and you know he possibly can do that but to compete with USC and Bellator It'll be tough, you know. Now Bellator just seems like it's having the snowball effect, which is getting bigger and bigger and bigger and bigger. Scott Croker's doing an amazing job so far with the promotion, and um, I'm very excited for the future of Bellator um, Fight Company. What do you think of uh, him getting in a mixed martial arts ring? Well, that's what I mean. If he really wants to get involved and really understand this business and learn this business, why not? Hey. But not as a promoter. How about as a fighter? Too? Oh, as a fighter, he wants to fight him, man. Well, he, I, I know there was. Wasn't there talk about Ronda Rousey fighting him or yeah, something? Yeah, I think they're just talking. Yeah. Jokingly, yeah, I think. jokingly. I mean, that, that's, I think he should stick to boxing. This is a much different animal. What do you think of Floyd Mayweather getting in the MMA game? That sounds interesting. The only thing I don't, I don't like about Floyd is we had a cabana next to him <laughs> back when I was in the UFC, back in like 2008. And uh, we're at the MGM, uh, what's it called? Wet Republic Pool Party, maybe 2009. And I had, a, I had a, a booth next to, or a cabana next to him. It was in the VIP of the VIP of the VIP, like top level of the pool party. And I had, I had girls with me, he had girls with him. And I'm at, I'm at the balcony uh, drinking a beer. He's smoking a cigar. I guess. And I went, hey, Floyd. He goes, ah. Uh, I went, hey, man. 
you know, you know us, we actually fight us. We we really respect boxers, man. Really, he goes, oh, uh, yeah, oh, yeah, yeah. I was like, man, hey, uh, before we all leave today, let's get your girls and my girls. Let's get a picture. He goes, hey, dog. If we get a picture, everyone's gonna start lining up for pictures, and then you know. It, we can't we can't have a good time man and then I can't have a good time everyone's gonna be on a picture with me and I can't hey dog I can't let that happen man you know what I'm saying I'm like right so I don't know man personally I don't think I get along with them so well I kind of felt like throwing them off the balcony but I didn't do that of course you know actually I respect him a lot as an athlete I didn't think it was respectful because I was trying to extend the olive branch of like that we respect boxers and if the boxers don't respect us that's absurd you know how can you not respect an Olympic wrestler how can you not respect an Olympic judo person how can you not respect a kickboxer like like Rim Monjowski or Krokop how, how is that possible so I, I think it was um, a little strange but hey if he's making a fair a fair venue for people to fight at a high level and god bless him and maybe he's seen the light maybe he's changed and that would be a good thing actually so nothing bad to say about him but that's my experience with him so um if, if he has uh, now uh, gained respect for mma then that's awesome and, and, and that's something that's a, a, a good thing you know are there any truths to the rumors that you want to get back in like WWE? No, of course I want to get back. Uh, there's un unfinished business there. I really felt like I earned a, earned a lot in um, getting a really a good having a program to to run for the WWF title. Uh, I believe that Rock went ahead of me, um, and and we had great matches for the Intercontinental uh, title, and he, and he went from that up to to challenge for the, the WWF title and end up getting it. I really believed I was next in line. Um, I did everything I needed to do. We, we had the fan base, we had the following, uh, people expected it, and then it was just cut off. Um, and so it was unfinished business. So when people ask me, hey, do you want to go back? I said, absolutely, I would love to go back because I felt like uh, it would be great to be able to have a run at that again. Uh, but for whatever reason, and I've asked, is there a reason why you've brought other people back and why that I have not been brought back? And if there is a reason, you know, can you, you know, at least tell me so at least I can walk away and understand why? Because I really felt like I earned that right and um, I heard nothing. Nobody said anything to me. So it is what it is, man. Just move forward. Having dabbled with TNA wrestling in the past, is pro wrestling still an avenue you'd like to explore in the future? Uh, I still like to, I still enjoy doing some pro wrestling, like independent shows. You know, it's hard, man. It's hard on your body. And I, if I do it, I can do it sparingly, you know, when I have free time. But, you know, it's just tough, man. I think it's hard to MMA. People want to bash me and say whatever they want, but if they want to find out for themselves, they can go to a wrestling school and just work, just do pro wrestling every day. And then do matches, do two or three matches a week. And tell me how your body feels. Because I guarantee you don't want to stop. How was Vince McMahon? How did he treat you? What was his relationship with him like? It was rough at times, you know. I mean, uh, Vince is a businessman. And there were times where I felt like I was missing my family and like I was spending a lot of time on the road. And I felt like, uh, and I ended up getting a divorce. Uh, I, I, and I was trying to save it. And, and, uh, and, and uh, Vince didn't want like the idea that I wanted out of my contract. And because I really felt that like my family was suffering. And so I, I ended up being able to, to go. Vince let me out of my contract to be able to go home. Um, but I don't know if that's the reason. And if it is, I think there should be an understanding, man. I had to save my family. Now, if that's the reason, I don't know. That's what I'm saying. I just want to know what the reason is and why, you know, they brought other people back who didn't have the, the success that I did. But yet those guys are coming back. And yet, yeah, I don't have an excuse why. Um, and maybe they won't give me one. If that's the case, then I'm okay with that too. You've done some work with TNA Wrestling in the past. Is that something you want to do more of, or just is that in the past? Well, you know, professional wrestling uh, is what got me into wrestling when I started in high school. You know, I walked in the wrestling room in high school thinking, where's the ring at? There was no ring. Not really associating collegiate wrestling to professional wrestling. Uh, when I did 
pro wrestling with TNA. I, I liked it. I dug it. You know, um, got a chance to meet Cole Colgan, hung out with him, talked to him for a couple hours. It seemed like he's a normal person just like me. We just go through a lot, many different things, many similarities that correlate with each other. And uh, wrestling was really, really fun. I digged it. You know, Dixie Carter was an amazing person to work with. Everybody on their staff are amazing people to work with. The wrestlers are great guys. Um, you know, it, there's a theatrical side of it that I love it, of course, but there's a competitive side of me that loves to fight. So, but if there's an opportunity for me to do it again, of course I'll do it again. It's fun. And I, fans got to understand that there's a difference. There's a pro fighter and there's a pro wrestler. We're two separate worlds. Um, and I don't like to join them together too much. That's why I haven't really gotten in and wrestled. You know, I came in as a, as a um, uh, referee and I came in messing around with Rampage. It was all, you know, choreographed, of course. Uh, but my professional side right now is fighting is my true goal. And that's winning the world title here at Bellator. There's something there, um, and I believe it. You know, starts with Hunter. I believe oh, there's okay. an issue there somewhere. Uh, and uh, if that's the case, I, being in the Hall of Fame will not happen. <laughs> will not happen. That's one of the questions I wanted to ask. Was was there something that happened between you and Triple H, or what? Like, could you elaborate on that at all? The only thing I know of is, is like when he came back, Vince, Vince, uh, he 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 had to do jobs, and I was one of the guys that he had to, to put over. Uh, and I was young coming in, and I know he didn't like it. And uh, I tried to make him feel like, hey, listen, I know I'm young here, and I, I, I appreciate you doing this for me. But he, he had an ego about it, an attitude about it. And I was like, you know, there's nothing I could do about it. I mean, I'm being told, I'm being told what to do also. Yeah. Uh, and then, you know, he treated some, I'm not going to get into details, but he, he really was, he was ribbing somebody pretty hard. And I ended up stepping in and telling him, you know, that's not cool. Yeah. And um, so I don't know if these are the reasons. I don't know because no one will tell me. It may even be with Vince. I don't know because I got out of my contract. I don't know the reasons, but I know there's two of them that can be there. One of them is because I got out of my contract, and the other one will be because of, you know, Hunter's running the business now and we didn't get along so well. Yeah. At least I don't think. I thought I was okay, but. Was there any pro wrestlers in particular backstage that you really got along well with or like good friendships you built? All of them, you know, so I met a lot of, like, you know, X-Pac, I like X-Pac, you know, I'm a big fan of Bobby Roode, AJ Styles was cool, you know, Bobby Lashley, um, MVP, Kenny King, you know, um, 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 Devon and, uh, and uh, Bubba, Ray, you know, just everybody, man, the whole, like, just the whole T TNA staff, the, the, the backstage, they were all cool, man. All of them were cool. James Storm, they were all down to earth, man. And I just can't wait to get a chance to be backstage with them again, and possibly, you know, get a chance to do some more work with TNA. Dixie was cool. Ethan, Ethan Carter, everybody, they were all cool, man. What about TNA? Would you go to TNA? A lot of the King Mo does some stuff with TNA. Uh, Tito's done some stuff with TNA. Is that an open door for you? Oh, absolutely. I'm like I said, I'm 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 open to to you know doing things. I, I, let's say I'm a free agent. I, I love entertainment, always have, and uh, I'm always open to you know discussions. I'm not going to go somewhere just to go there though. You know, I mean, it's got to make sense to me. What's your opinion on like some of the Bellator guys doing pro wrestling, like stunts, or, like like like, in, like, like uh, in uh, uh, TNA? Are you are you comfortable with that still, or do you have a different outlook on that? You know, how I feel is like if they want to go pro wrestle, have at it. You know, enjoy yourself. Yeah. It's entertaining. It's fun. Um, but you can't deny this: when the cage door shuts and they have to go in there and fight, you know it's good. it's you better be ready for the fight. Yeah. And as long as they're ready for that fight, when the time comes, I'm okay. For I'm, I'm I'm a huge fan of Scott Coker, and I, I really admire the direction that he's taken. Uh, this brand and, and the company, I, I, my hat's always been off to Spike TV for being willing to put this sport on television when nobody else had the balls to do it, frankly. Yeah. And uh, so uh, I have no official uh, connection to Bellator at all. My, my deal is with Spike TV. We did Fight Master uh, for, the, the, actually it was connected to Bellator, but that was a Spike TV show. I did Jim Rescue uh, for Spike TV. Uh, we're still seat in in the contract with Spike to develop television programs for Spike and so uh, you know we'll see where that relationship ends. Um, I, I do like the direction that Bellator has taken, uh, you know, get, getting rid of the lawyers, uh, going back to the old format uh, of one big marquee fight a month uh, with names that everybody's talking about and, and kind of that that's the, that's the way I came up through fighting and, and I think that uh, that's that's 
a good choice on Scott's part. Uh, Scott has, when I, when I realized what Scott had done, I was like, man, that's just genius. I mean, he's reached out to Royce Gracie, he's reached out to Randy Couture, I mean, obviously Tito's here, he's a big time legend, really did a lot for the sport. I just see so many legends here, so many guys here that Scott Coker reached out to and said, hey, we would love for you to be a part of this. And I thought to myself, why is it taking so long for for legends, the guys who helped build the sport, who put their blood, sweat, and tears in the ring, and all the fans that supported them, how come they haven't been a part of trying to support these young fighters coming up, bringing them in, doing interviews, and making them part of this party um, that these young fighters are starting to come up and fight in and give it the support for them, because we've already been there and done that. And, you know, we have an insight on what's happening and, and, and you know, even breaking down fighters, uh, experiences. One guy has this, one guy has that. Because we had the education for that. But it just seems like Scott's the only one that has really said, you know what? These guys are all sitting out there. UFC's not using them. Nobody else is using them. I'll use them. And once he did that, I don't think there's a doubt in anybody's mind what this has been up to this point has been a buzz. It has been a buzz. Social media has gone through the roof because I was under the roof in the same signing place as Hoist Gracie. Uh, me and Tito were buried the hatchet. Um, I'm supporting Tito. I mean, all it was was because he, Scott reached out and said, you know what, let's bring in some of these legends who helped build the sport. And now you see a huge social media boost for what's going on with Bellator. Why has it taken this long to do that? I mean, we've definitely earned the right to be a part of this. What do you think it's going to take for Bellator to get like, on even playing field with the UFC? <laughs> I don't know. Just big fights, know. just big fights with like yeah. what they're doing with you and Tito. Just I don't continue. know, from what I saw, the numbers, they're doing all right. You know? yeah. they're, they're, they're doing just fine. So um, I say keep doing what they're doing. Scott Coker seems to be doing a good job. So faith in ye Coker. Where do you see MMA going like five years from now? You see them just being huge oh, huge. If I had that crystal ball, I would have been playing the lotto. Yeah. <laughs> Do you, do you see like soccer size stadium events in Brazil MMA like that big of a? You already had that in Japan. Yeah. We used to hold Pride and Dynamite over New Year's evening over at Tokyo Dome. It's a soccer size stadium, baseball stadium, it's live TV going on. A hundred thousand people, national stadium in Tokyo. Hundred thousand people on the, on the seats. Yeah. Yep. Do you think I could do that in Brazil? Will they sell that many tickets? In Brazil? Yeah. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah? So why hasn't it been done yet? Why hasn't the UFC or My Bellator father done that back oh, really? in Brazil. Yes. How many years ago? My father did Maracanã. How many years ago was that? Oh, I don't remember, but it was a long time a long ago. Time ago. He fought was at Maracanã Stadium, the biggest soccer stadium until today, practically. One of the biggest soccer stadiums in the world. Wow. In this business, I think there's going to be ups and downs in years. People get hurt, fighters get, you know, it's just part of this business. But I think it's has a long way to go, but I feel like uh, the trajectory is still upward and onward, and we're going to help promote that and push that. Of course, look at the growth of Grace Jiu-Jitsu all over the world, not just in America, all over the world. It's a, if you take Grace Jiu-Jitsu out of the fights, you'll be back the old days, karate against kickboxing, wrestling against judo. You just said recently that the Brazilians in MMA in North America they uh, they need to expand the game plan more, right? You said something along those lines uh, in an interview I saw. Uh, no, people ask me. Okay. okay. I'll give you the question okay. there. So yeah. the question was, what do the Brazilians need to do to to cause they're losing all the belts? Yeah. I said, well, they need to work on the strategy. Expand the strategy game. It's not just come out and duke it out because they got talent, they're very tough, they just need to work on strategy. One of the Silva got his fight license banned for life. Uh, Chell Sun got in trouble for uh, PEDs or whatever uh, the supplements that he took that were illegal. 
Um, what's your opinion on that whole situation? You know, I, my whole situation on that's been negative since day one. Since Ray, or excuse me, since uh, uh, Forrest Griffin was uh, allowed to do it during our fight, my last fight, UFC 148. Um, it's cheating. The way, which way you turn it is cheating. Um, if your body's not able to compete and train at the level with all these athletes, uh, then you should step away, retire, go to another sport, do something else. Um, it's a mental testing. It's a physical test. It's a lot of things that your mind got to really push through those hard days of training. And uh, when your body's not able to compete at that level, walk away. And I told myself the same thing. If I get to that level and I can't do it anymore, I'm going to walk away. But I have a very strong mind, a very strong heart, and I work really, really hard. And I just try to dedicate myself to this job of mixed martial arts. What do you make of the criticism of being in the UFC Hall of Fame, you, there was criticism online. What do you think of people downplaying that, in your opinion? <laughs> I don't know, it's not like I went on this campaign to put me in the Hall of Fame, I deserve it. It was like someone else made a decision to put me in the Hall of Fame. So what do I do? I smile and accept the trophy. Yeah. So if you don't like that, then take it up with Dana. Speaking of Ken Shamrock, he's here today. Is there any like uh, like uncomfortable vibe between? There's the no animosity towards me and Ken. Me and Ken are actually friends now. You know, it went from acquaintance to be friends now. You know, we talked on a few occasions. You know, he's an awesome guy. He pushed me to the next level. We competed against each other just to make me that much better um, of a fighter to train harder. And um, you know, there was a time yes. where you know I. I my first fight where you know I, was, I had a little bit of fear. You know, he's the world's most dangerous man. And I wasn't sure how good I really was, but my first fight showed how good I really was, and my confidence just built more and more and more. And knowing that you know a young kid who started this game as an amateur competing in the UFC for free, um, my first UFC, UFC 13, and becoming a world champion for a year and a half, that I compete against these guys who've been doing it for you know 10, 12 years, and then after I compete against them, it's just we built a relationship through the time. It's just a respect value, I think, and uh, he respects me a lot. Will we see Shamrock or Shamrock fight one day, or has that ship just sailed? Yeah, that's not going to happen. No. Um, you know, we're in a different place, different time now. We put, we've kind of buried that hatchet, um, and uh, that that's not going to happen. If you see us together, it'll be in a business venture. Do you see like women's mixed martial arts expanding in Bellator more than? Oh, yeah. 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 I mean, uh, we signed seven of the top ten 145 pound weight class uh, females, and we're going to continue to expand it. We might add one more weight class, and uh, that's that's kind of the future goal. How has injuries like affected your career as a fighter? It slowed me down a lot. You know, Sab Fiction had four ACL surgeries. You know, Seth Fiction was killed me, you know what I'm saying? But it made me bounce back. I have to become a smarter fighter because, you know, some of the stuff I used to be able to do, I can't do as much. I can, but I got to be sparing when I do it because I'm not trying to risk any injury. So I just got to be smarter. That's all it is. How many fights do you have left in your career? And what is it that keeps you motivating to, to continue accomplishing having like a Hall of Fame career? Uh, how, many, how many more fights do you got? You know, um, I have uh, three more fights with uh, Bellator, and my goal is to become a world champion and uh, retire as the world champion. That's my goal. And retire by, you know, hopefully at the age of 40 years old, be done, and continue on in this mixed martial art world, working with Bellator on the promotion side of it, uh, since I've been doing it for so long. You know, this will be upcoming to my 18th year of uh, competing, so I think the uh, promotion side I can do very well with. What's the biggest challenge for you as a fighter, you feel? I don't know. You said waking up every day, you know, you're going to train and get punched in the face or do some grappling. Every day is a fucking challenge, you know what I'm saying? Yeah. Every day you wake up, you get your face a different challenge. It's all, it's all the same to me. It's tough. What kind of goals do you have like set for you after your MMA career? Is there anything else, any big dreams you want to accomplish? Anything out there that... Well, yeah, um, you know, I win the world title, you know, being a two-time title holder in, in two different, in two different uh, uh, promotions. I think that would be a, a great goal to accomplish, and that's a goal that's set in my mind. I'm going to accomplish that. Um, you know, theatrically, uh, I like to do some films, uh, but the right things got to happen for the right times, the right reasons. Uh, timing's everything. But right now, my whole career, everything is set strictly on fighting. You know, I have three more fights ahead of me. I want to compete these three fights and win a world title, and that's my goal. Is there anything you still want to accomplish in your life, maybe outside of fighting? A dream you have of something really royal that you want to do? I hope to hang around long enough to see my, see my kids grow. Because I'm good to go, man. Being there, done that.
I do not know what you're talking about. Okay. Whatever you heard was complete bullshit. Scott Coker's got a freaking nutsack on him, I tell you that.